Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how bacteria, viruses, fungi and protoctista can act as pathogens. OK, now the immunity topic is all about how the body deals with disease. I'm showing you four examples of diseases here. We have bacterial meningitis, HIV, thrush and malaria. Now all of these are examples of communicable diseases. Communicable diseases can be spread between organisms, either of the same species or sometimes between different species. Now communicable diseases are spread by pathogens, and a pathogen is a microorganism which can cause a disease. The organism which the pathogen infects is called the host. There are four main categories of pathogens. These are bacteria, viruses, fungi and protoctista, which are also called protista. We're going to start by looking at bacteria. Now bacteria are prokaryotic cells, and we looked at prokaryotic cells in a previous video. Remember that in bacteria, the genetic material is not found in a membrane-bound nucleus. Instead, we find the bacterial chromosome and plasmids in the cytoplasm. Also, bacteria do not have other membrane-bound organelles, such as mitochondria. Bacterial cells are surrounded by a cell wall, containing the chemical peptidoglycan. Now, once they enter the body, pathogenic bacteria can release toxins. Toxins are chemicals which damage host cells and tissues, leading to the symptoms of the disease. Some bacteria can enter host cells and prevent them from functioning normally, for example the bacteria which cause tuberculosis. Now, viruses are much smaller than bacteria, and unlike bacteria, viruses are non-living. In fact, viruses have no cellular structure at all. Viruses consist of genetic material, which can be DNA or RNA, and the genetic material is wrapped in a protein structure called a capsid. Viruses also have attachment proteins, which allow the virus to attach to host cells. And some viruses also contain a lipid envelope. Now, a key feature of viruses is that they cannot reproduce outside of a host cell. To reproduce, a virus attaches to the host cell and then passes through the cell membrane. The virus then copies itself using the enzymes of the host cell. The virus particles now leave the host cell and can go on to infect new host cells and continue reproducing. Viruses prevent a host cell from functioning normally. And in many cases, a virus can lead to the death of the host cell. OK, now fungi are eukaryotic organisms, and they can be unicellular or multicellular. I'm showing you here the fungus which causes athlete's foot in humans. Fungi obtain nutrients by releasing enzymes and digesting the material around them. The products of digestion are then absorbed back into the fungal cells. Now, this process of digestion can cause damage to host cells and tissues. When they reproduce, fungi release a large number of spores, so fungal diseases can spread very widely. Many species of fungi are found in the remains of dead organisms, where they take part in the decay process. However, pathogenic fungi are found on living organisms, where they cause disease. For example, in humans, fungi cause thrush and athlete's foot. Fungi can also cause a range of diseases in plants, including some which are very destructive. By damaging the leaves, fungi can reduce the rate of photosynthesis, and this can severely reduce the yield of plant crops. OK, now protoctista or protista are eukaryotic organisms, and I'm showing you two examples here. These protoctista act as pathogenic parasites in humans. Giardia causes diarrhea and is transmitted when humans drink water containing infected faeces. Plasmodium is the pathogen that causes malaria in humans, and is transmitted between humans by mosquitoes. And we'll be looking at malaria in a later video. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the four main categories of pathogens.